Hello and welcome to JHEP's lesson on Prim's algorithm suitable for AQA, Edexcel, OCR, MEI, the lot, apart from Wayjek who doesn't do decision maths. Anyways, Prim, uh, this guy over here, he thought about things logically and he thought about the consequences of just choosing things at his own will, like unlike Kruskal. So his way, um, which is mostly depicted in exams as in starting from this point and that's how you distinguish between Prim and Kruskal by the way that's my way of doing things if it says starting from this point it's Prim if it doesn't say starting from this point it's probably Kruskal um, here's a bit of terminology that I went through over Kruskal's algorithm um, the minimum spanning tree and the cycle um, go over um, go over um, Kruskal's algorithm if you want to go and see the explanation. So for Prim's algorithm, let's say that we needed to start from A. Uh, we needed to find the minimum spanning tree for this. First thing you need to remember is that this is not Dijkstra's algorithm where, or the traveling salesman algorithm where you need to walk all the way around to return back to A or anything. No, this is basically like the national grid supplying energy to all these points, all these towns. And you just got to find a way without creating a cycle. So the first thing you do, you start from A, and then you've got two choices. You can either go down the one route or the five route. Um, the main term, the main consideration is that this is this is the least weight. So technically you should be going this way. Okay, so as like cruise scouts, you just mark A to C down here, and then you can write it down A to C. That's one. Now the next thing, um, the next thing you do, you're you're over here, and you're over here. Okay, you got two points to which um to start at now. So you can either go down here. You can either go down here, or you can either go across here. You always select the one with the minimum weight, but we're met with two choices. We're met with C to D and A to B. Choose randomly. It's your choice. Free will. So I say go, I don't know, C to D. Okay. And then if you write it down, C to D, which equals 5. Now, the next one, you can start from D, C, or A. So, you can either have a choice of 10, 15, 10, or 5. I think the obvious one is this 5 over here, because that is the minimum one. So, we go down here, from A to B, and that is 5. From A to B, and that is 5. Now, we've got another choice. We can either go up here, go across here, Go up here, go across here, or down here. Well, we can't really go down here. So the next one we could do, we can't do this one because that's that will get rejected just due to the fact that if we did that, it will create a cycle. Um, in Excel students, you might want to write down B to C 10 and then cross it out and write reject. B to C equals 10, cross it out and then write reject. Um, the next one, is D to F okay and that would not make a cycle so D to F D to F and that's 10 now the next one we've got is 13 because this is the minimum one and we can start from B so to get from B to E it's 13 sorry about my wonky handwriting so from B to E equals 13. This is like a trace of um, which ways you're going by the way. Um, it's mostly suitable to do that. Now, now if you haven't noticed we've done all of that. We've connected all the points now so we don't need to carry on further. But again at Excel students and anyone else who um, likes doing extra work um, all you need to do is do E to D. E to D 15 reject and E to F 17 reject. E to F 17 reject. Now, if we add it all up again, 
So that was 10, 20, 21, 34. Our MST is 34. And if you were watching the other video before, you, you'd know that that MST is exactly the same as Kruse Cal's algorithm. They're exactly the same. And exactly the same um, diagram as well. Can you believe? Now, the thing about Prim's algorithm is that you can apply it on matrices. So, if we quickly fill this out, the matrix is basically the distance between one point and the next point. So, there would not be any distance between A and A is zero, or B and B, or C and C, or D and D, or E and E, and F and F which is also a brand in Tesco's. So, from A to B, that's 5. From A to C, that's 1. There is nothing here. From B to A, um, would you need to do that? Would you need to write... Yes, you do. Um, you'd write 5. And then from um, B to B, B to C, um, that's 10. Uh, B to D, you can't do that. B to E, that's 13. B to F, you can't do that. And then C to A, um, that's 1. C to B, uh, that's 10. C to C, C to D, that's 5. C to E, uh, anyways, I'm going to pause this video and complete it. Just hold on a sec. Okay, we're back with the matrices. I just completed it out because it was taking far too long. So what you need to do in order to find the MST using the matrix is actually very interesting. What you would do is you would select a vertex. Um, I'm going to select this one, A, randomly, okay? It doesn't really matter. You can, you can write... Um, you can write number one here, number one there. You can pick the first one as anything, to be honest. Now, what you do is, since you picked A, you need to cross out this A. Okay? This is in order to prevent you picking any small numbers from this row. Okay? You're not allowed to pick any numbers from this row ever. Now, it's final. So... What you do, you pick the lowest number, which is C, over here, okay, and you circle it, and then you cross out the rest, okay, because you don't need any more. Now, since this is on the C column, this is your second vertex, is being chosen for you. So, now we need to find the smallest number in rows a and C and that is 5 and 5 oh look at here so we can choose remember you can also you can always you can always do that you can always write down as a trace so let's say um, I'm going to pick hmm, this one okay A to B A to B equals 5 so you cross out the rest and since this is in row B Column B is now your third vertex. Now we need to find out the smallest number in rows one. Well, we can't we can't do it anymore because there's only dashes. So basically, column C and column B. And as you can see, the number which is the smallest here is five. So you cross out the rest of the numbers in the row in order for you not to pick them anymore. And then since this is in row D. That's your fourth vertex. As you can see, if this wasn't, um, if this wasn't uh, crossed out, you might accidentally just return to another vertex, and you wouldn't want to do that. You want to use up all the vertex for all the vertices. So this is C to D, by the way. So that's C to D, and that's five. So number four is um, you need to find the shortest number, which is ten. Yeah. So that's D to F. D to F, which is 10. And then you cross out the numbers on the side. And because this is row F, we need to pick column F as our fifth one. Now, we need to find out the smallest numbers in between rows A, uh, columns A, B, C, D, and F. 
and that is 13 okay that's the smallest number out of this one so that's e to b and that's 13 so cross out all the numbers here and that's your fifth vertex but that's it we finished all the numbers and as you can see here if we add it all up I'm trusting this 5 plus 5 is 10 plus 10 is 20 plus 1 is 23 plus 13 is 34 so our minimum spanning tree is 34 and that's how you use it with the matrix and this is how you use it with the graph remember remember